Hello, welcome back. And uh, this time we are going to talk about the special topic that is in the family of a power amplifier, we will talk about the class C amplifier. And we have seen class A amplifier, we have seen class B amplifier, we have seen class AB amplifier, and one more addition is now a class C amplifier. So, in order to understand the basic principle of class C amplifiers operation and understand its construction, we would need to recall few points from our earlier modules that is based on class A, class B and class AB. So, if you are new to this module, we would encourage you to refer back to our previous model on the family of the power amplifiers that we have already covered so that you have a better understanding for this particular topic. So to start with, what is a class C amplifier? So you see here is your schematic, which has a BJT. It can be FET also, it can be MOSFET also. And then you bias this transistor in such a way that you have a base emitter voltage VBE that is across the base emitter junction of a diode. And therefore you have a base current flow into the base pin of the transistor. Once you put the transistor into conduction, there is a DC gain of transistor beta called as beta. Beta multiplied by IB gives you IC that flows through the load, let's say RL, which is connected between the DC power supply and the collector pin of the transistors. And then input voltage is VBE, output voltage is VCE. Accordingly, then you apply a small signal to be amplified and then you have a large output which is fed to the load that is connected right here. Okay, external load. So this is actually a collector resistance. You have an external load where you delivered the power RL, right? So that is the basic principle of class A amplifier. Why I'm saying class A amplifier? Because we want to understand what is class C. So for a class A, as shown right here, you have the sinusoidal input and you have an amplified output, the power amplified output. And it is, of course, the inverted uh, amplifier. However, in a class A, we call it class A because your output current your transistor conducts an output current for full time of the input waveform. It means from 0 to 2 pi, your transistor is on. And we say that the conduction angle is 360 degree for the class A amplifier. And a class B, we said the conduction angle is uh, up to 180 degree, right? And then class AB, this is class B, this is class A. And for class AB, we said that your conduction angle was uh, more than 180 degree. Okay, more than 180 degree. So that's how. And now class C, the difference is here. So instead of when you apply a sinusoidal signal, that is, what you basically do, you switch on the transistor only for a short amount of time, as shown by this short pulse which is of course in opposite phase to the input signal because it's an inverting signal. So here the conduction angle is less than 180 degree. So that's the first point. Instead of conducting the transistor for a full 360 degree or 180 degree or in between 180 to 360 degree, which we did in earlier classes of amplifier. In class C, we are letting the transistor to be on only for the specific time interval of the input cycle. That is less than 180 degrees. So as a result, your transistor produces the short current pulses as shown, which then are flowing. This short current pulses are flowing through the load that is connected. But this time, the load is not purely resistive or simply resistive. Instead, have a look at this. As shown by this arrow, your tank 
composing of inductor and the capacitor that is called as LC tank circuit or LC resonance circuit makes a load for the transistor. So from class A, we got transition to class C. And RFC, this is another coil that is used just for the purpose of the biasing. So you have a negative voltage here and the voltage across the inductor provides the biasing for the transistor. Then VI is your sinusoidal input and VO is your amplified output, of course. But amplified output, as I draw here, the full sine wave is not correct. Rather, I would draw the short pulses. Short pulses as shown right here. Okay, that's the output. So, we use a tank as a load. Conduction angle is less than 180 degree. So, this kind of construction in a class A amplifier leads to very high power efficiency up to 80% that is possible. And why we have such a high, high power efficiency? Because we are letting the transistor conduct current only for a small portion of the time of the input signal that is less than 180 degree. So a lot of power, DC power is saved. Is There is not much heat being generated because transistor is on only for a small portion of amount of time. However, Having such arrangement, which leads to very high efficiency, leads also to the high distortion because uh, your transistor is on only for a, a small portion of time and it is switching. So there is there is this noise comes into the picture. Okay, so where is the application of this uh, class C amplifier? So in the radio frequency ap amplification, such as your radio trans for a transmitter that is RF transmitter, you use this kind of circuit where your input signal is used to switch on this transistor for a limited amount of time that produces a short amount of pulses, which then, uh, uh, which is basically the current that flows through this tuned circuit. And then the LC has its own resonant frequency that is matched with the input frequency that you apply as an input to the signal, okay? Here is a load line analysis that helps us to understand the Q point for this circuit, for this circuit, okay? So let's say you have the output current, you have the output voltage, and this red line indicates your load line. That is called as DC load line. So in the green, you see the input current and the output current. So here is your input current varying with respect to time. So what I have shown here, you have an operating point indicated by this black dot. So operating point is right here, well below the load line. You have this DC load line and uh, you have a current intersection here you have a voltage intersection here but the operating point right over here for a class a amplifier your operating point is here for a class b amplifier your operating point is here for a class a b amplifier your operating point is here but for a class c your operating point is here so with this biasing arrangement have a look at this input current in milliampere, the green line with respect to time. And when you have this input current flow into the transistor, your output current with respect to time that is shown on this axis is basically your output current is available only for less uh, small amount of time. So this period is less than pi. Less than pi means less than 180 degree. So that's the concept of operating point. So, hope you understood the basic concept of uh, class A amplifier, which finds its, finds its application in radio transmitter and receiver just uh, for RF communication, where you basically use uh, quasi switching action of the transistor. Okay, so stay tuned for more informative contents like this. And till then, wish you happy learning. Do share this video with uh, others if you have liked uh, it and uh, don't forget to like it and uh, put some comments as your opinion.
wish you happy learning